Hello and uh, good afternoon or good evening. Welcome to New Forest Morphs. Jared and I have been having a mega planning session today. I promised you last week that we were going to give you an update on our future plans. But before we do that, we've had a shed out and it's the banana spider. We think they're heck clowns rather than clowns now. We've actually, Jared's put a picture out um, on Instagram. We've had three friends come back to us and they reckon that it's a heck clown, not a clown, which is amazing because they look so beautiful as head clowns and imagine when we get clown into them but we're going to give you a quick preview of these beautiful snakes both of them shut out now so we'll put them in the light box together and uh, thank you all those people that have given us their opinions and i think jad and i both agree with the opinions jad yeah and what why do you think we think they're head clowns as opposed to clowns so i think the thing that threw us off the most was their head markings yeah uh, maybe if we show them they might be let's do it let's it. show you show it first and then because okay spiders can throw really interesting head patterns yeah and that's what threw us off yeah we thought cool they look like clowns so you can see the two little babies they're in the back there and they've both shed out see those head markings yeah incredible jad they're absolutely gorgeous but i'll put them under the light box and then what we'll do as you can see see the two beautiful little sheds we got here jad mm-hmm so let's um, put them in the light box and if you want to present them as a pair and zoom in on their beautiful patterns let's have a look and see what we've got here now, i think they're stunning animals um, and while they're shut out Jay, you can see their full beauty so here they are so the reason why we think they're head clowns and what people have told us is if you look on the side of their eyes they've got eye stripes there's lines and spot and uh, clowns don't have those so even though the heads look very clowny, we figure they're just head clowns. Yeah. But absolutely beautiful. They are gorgeous, Jan. I do like them a lot. And look how bright banana is in there. Banana clowns are gorgeous, but I think the head clowns having an influence, and that's why the head patterns are changing, and that's why also the spiders changing. I think it's having an influence. Um, but now, you've did you sex one of them, Jad? One's a boy, isn't it? Yeah, one's definitely a boy. I'm assuming they're both going to be boys because with bananas, normally you get sex traits. Yeah, so it could well both be boys, which is great news. We can grow them up and plug them into our projects and produce some full visual clowns. So, do you want me to hold that, Jared? Or you just want it to run nicely. Oh, they're gorgeous, Jared. Absolutely stunning. They're beautiful. Yeah. I just love the way the patterns are all broken up here. I mean, very strong animals. They've really, they've really strengthened up, Jared. And I'll tell you what, I'll take them both together. They are gorgeous. Let's go back under the light box and have a little bit of snake candy. <laughs> say light box, but I think over here, Jared, with the light shining on them. Is that good light for you? Or should I come around the other way? Then so what do you think? Yeah, beautiful. I love them. And you can see... The spider also has that lovely white blushing from the from the belly up. And you can see they're orange at the moment, but that'll get whiter and whiter, won't they, as they get older. And look, these are real characters, aren't they lovely? And I can now see the side stripe better. Yeah. But then there's no wobble on these, which is lovely. Yeah, and spider wobble can develop over time. I think what's happening, Jared, is that the mother is a very stable spider. There's very but little even wobble. that doesn't change it's not are. yeah but it's very encouraging that when you get into the spider gene there's there's variability on on the wobble but i think overall they, they are absolutely stunning animals is there much of a difference between them do you think this one here has got more orange in the spider markings yeah whereas that one's more purple yeah you see that i wonder why that one's more purple than the other but i love these look at these markings here chad aren't they gorgeous the banana coming in on the spider webbing yeah and you see these spots here? Look at the spots. I wonder if that's a marker for clown because clowns are spotted. Do spiders have spots as well? Um, I'm not sure. I think they're more of an actual pattern. Yeah. Look. One of the girls we've got that's a spider, but I've not seen any spots on her. Yeah. Lovely snakes though. They are beautiful. We're very happy to have them here. Real good characters as well, aren't they? Lovely together. Absolutely stunning. I'm really pleased with those, Jared. 
So we'll basically, we'll slip them back. I suppose what we should do is dry out their rub now and then we'll set them up on individual rubs and we'll give them names, we'll sex them to make sure they're both males. We did do one, so I know one of them's definitely a male. So the chances are that they're both males because they're from the banana. Yeah. So we'll slip you guys back. They love their little hide and they love to come out and play. And I find the bananas, this, this one reminds me of Apollo. They're so friendly, these bananas, aren't they? They do want to come out and play. Really, they're really fascinated. They want to come out and see what's going on. <laughs> you are absolutely beautiful. Right, we'll slip you back. I hope you enjoyed that post shed video on these beautiful snakes. So the next thing we've been doing, and I wanted to um, just show Jared that we've put one more pairing in here with the highway project. And there's a little bit of activity going on here. They haven't locked, but um, our beautiful super gravel, which is one of our projects for next year, Electra has just shed out today. And I just want to show you how beautiful she looks. There she is. And her husband, which is a super ivory, super pastel, is getting intimate, can you see? He's locking his tail around her body, not her tail. But well, that could be, you know, pre-dating activity, Jared. It's good that they're touching each other, yeah. Yeah, there's compatibility there, and he may well have locked, not told us. And um, so we're gonna keep those together for a while, but next year we're gonna actually put your pastel gravel to her, aren't we, Jared? Now I'll show you what we've got over here. So we've got a guy called Skip who's one of Jared's favourites, and you've brought him on, Jared, haven't you? Yeah, I've got big plans for him. Yeah, so tell us what your plans are with this fella here. So he is a pastel gravel 100% head clown. Yeah. So my plans for him are to produce pastel highway clowns, because I think they're absolutely stunning, and they're one of my favourite looking morphs. They look a bit like a retic, but in a small animal. There he is. I think he's starting to go into shed, Jared. Yeah, he is. But he weighs over 10, I think it's a thousand grams he weighs, doesn't he? Yeah. And you checked him that he's definitely a male and yep. he's producing sperm, Jared? Yep, he's got sperm. Yeah. So Jared's, what we've been doing as part of our planning is all our grow-ons, before we put them into the breeding rotation, we are checking their weights to make sure they're up to size. And then we're checking their sexuality to see if the boys are producing sperm. And I think of the 10 boys we've checked today, I would say that eight of them have shown sperm and two of them haven't yet, but they are up to size. So just because they're up to size, it doesn't mean that you can breed with them. It means that you should check to see if they're producing sperm. And that's what we've done on our breeding plan. So I wanted to show you what I did the other day over the weekend to prepare for Jad and I having this planning session. Because I've made a list and you can see here, a list of all the boys with all their weights and numbers and a list of all the girls. So that was my homework. I went through the whole of the rubs. I weighed all the snakes. I got everything down and all their names and numbers. And then we've converted that onto our Excel spreadsheet. And I think that's very important to see which animals you've got that are sexually mature and big enough to breed. So you get your list of males, you get your list of females, and then you have to sit together as a team, father and son team, to agree on what we're gonna be doing going forwards. Now, next year's breeding projects won't start for a couple of months, but we do it early preparation so that we can look to see whether we need to get in any backup males, whether we need to um, do anything in particular in here to accommodate any of these snakes, whether it's giving them particular food, whether it's getting, seeing what their weight is and see which ones need to put on more weight before they enter the breeding rotations. So that's why it's important for us to really have this planning session to see what's available to us. And I think overall what we're going to do is we're going to, from the things that we've learned from last year, we've learned that it's, it's not always a good thing to be breeding the same snakes year in year out because we did that this year with two of our pied girls and they all both slugged down us. So Jad and I have decided to rest a lot of the boys and girls from last year, give them a break and actually focus on our new females and our new males and let them provide us with most of our projects this year. And that way we give our snakes from last year a good long rest and maybe a year off to get them even better in condition and to let them build their reserves. And I think sometimes it's dangerous to keep breeding a snake in year and year out. You know, when we're doing our own family planning, Mandy and I had a couple of years between each child. 
because I wanted Mandy to be feel comfortable. I wanted her to regain her strength. And I'm sure, Jared, you'll probably do the same with your family. That Now, every family's different. I'm not saying you shouldn't have a baby every year. But what I'm saying is in my experience is that in life, I think sometimes it's good to pace yourself and to pace the animals and to treat them with so much respect and uh, allow them to actually have a resting year. So you probably will see that some of our favorite breed snakes we're gonna rest for a year and we're gonna see what we can do with our new snakes coming up. We might go in and out of one or two snakes from last year, we'll see where we go, but we're gonna be open-minded and flexible, but overall I think we're gonna rest a lot of the snakes from last year. So with that said, why don't we gather around the computer and have a look at some of our projects. And Jared, would you like to maybe sit there and then I'll sit here and I'll just go through some of the plans that we've got. And um, okay, I think the first one we'll do is we'll just go up and see um, where are we here? Let's go up to look at some of our first one is the Pastel Enchi Leo Lesser Clown, which is going to be Hercules. Now, at the moment, Hercules is not producing sperm, is he? No, but he weighs 800 grams. Yeah, so we think he'll come on in the next couple of months and we'll keep an eye on him before we he enters there but we've selected potentially four girls for him I'm not saying we're going to put him to all of them but if we if we were these are the four that we're looking at so we're going to put him to our Enchi Desert Ghost um, girl and that will be uh, Isla now let's go and have a look at her Jared so we can see the pairings now she's currently weighing 1600 grams Let's have a look and see how she's doing. There she is. She eats two small multis a week. She's a multi eater. She has occasionally taken a small rat, but she prefers multis. So what we're doing to get her up to size, and what we have done to get her up to size, is to give her two small multis a week, um, which is perfect for her. She's been putting off sufficient weight. Now you can see the size that she's in. If you have a look at her. There she is. So she's at about, I think she's, when we weighed her, she was about 13 to 1400 grams. And in the next couple of months, she'll put on two or 300 grams and she'll get her up to about 16, 1700 and then we'll start pairing them. And what we're gonna produce, Jared, is what we're aiming to produce there. So he has got leopard and where is he? He's the boy. That's not the boy. Oh, no, we're going to put the Hercules. Hercules, sorry. Now, where is he? Because Hercules shut out today. Uh, here he is. So he's Pastel Enchi Leopard Lesser Clown. Yeah. So we want to hit all of those genes with a double hair clown and desert ghost. Yeah. And he's weighing about 800 grams. He's a beautiful one, isn't he? He's absolutely gorgeous. He's just shut out today. Yeah. Lovely temperament. So we're aiming for some double heads here. Now you might think, oh, that's crazy going, why don't you go for some visuals? But what we're thinking here is we're taking a longer term view here. So we're sacrificing beautiful visuals this year to produce those double heads, which then we can put back later and then produce the visuals. So it is the amount of codoms as well that they've got. Yeah, so he's got five, four codoms to go in there so yeah, four, what, what we're doing is one. we're placing a lot of codons in with the double hets so that when we do get the visuals those codons hopefully some of them will go with them yeah so that's the strategy that we're taking on that one so that's really exciting and what else who else are we going to put to her to her please let's have a look on the plan jack and just see what else we do so we've just got a head clown nothing too special but so we've got cami yeah um and then we've got the enchi lesser clown yeah. Which I think that's pretty straightforward why we're going for those ones. Yeah. Um, and we've got the bamboo as well, so we can try and get some bamboo head clowns. Yeah, so we thought we'd actually use the bamboo girl, because she's now quite a big girl, could produce a lot of eggs for us, produce some bamboo head clowns. So the rationale and idea behind that, Jared, is that the more head clowns we have from different genes, codons, the more codons that can go into the clown project. So the idea is that if we've got bamboos, ultra males, hides, whatever you've got, if you create lots of um, 
uh, heck clowns with different codoms, you can then mix them into your clown projects much easier. Yeah. We're finding that with the fire heck clowns, with the cinnamon heck clowns, um, with all the heck clowns that we've produced this year, we're finding it's going to be beautiful because we can put them into our projects. So I think that's another strategy that we're adopting is produce the hets so that you can then produce more codon clowns going forwards. So that's the plan that we've got for Hercules. Then moving on to our banana super pastel orange dream boy, which is Apollo. Now he's in such good shape that we're going to continue to breed with him. You know, he's very healthy, looking good. And what have we decided to do, Jared? Where are we going to put him to? So we've got a cinnamon girl, we've got a calico enchi pastel fire girl, and a calico girl. Yeah, so we want to put the banana orange dream into the calico projects and we want to put the banana into the cine. So banana cines are gorgeous. And then eventually we'll bring them into the banana cine clown projects. So this is a building block to something that we're going to be building forward. So we want to get the cine and bananas together. So that's Apollo's um, one. The lightning pied boy, he's got plenty of sperm. He actually produced the most sperm, isn't he? He's 790 grams. He has been off food for a few weeks, so we've got to keep an eye on that. And it may well be that he wants to breed, and that may be the reason, but he's producing so much sperm, that's probably the reason, Jared. But what we'll do is we'll keep offering him food and keep building him before we start breeding with him. Who's the first girl that we're going to put to him, Jared, on here? Um, we've got a super pastel het pied, because we want to get that pastel into the VPI and into the lightning pied, because yeah. it really makes the colours pop. Yeah. Or the lack of colours pop, I should say. Yep, and also we've got another one which is a pastel 100% het pied as well. Yep. His, so we have got a female lightning pied, but she's not big enough yet. She's yep. still quite small. She's been a slow feeder and she wouldn't be ready until next year anyway. Yep. But she's now back on food, so hopefully um, we'll get her ready so that he can then produce some double hets um, going forwards. So that, um, like we did with the Dream School Boy, we've got some eggs in here that are hopefully going to be um, pied. Uh, het lavender albinos and getting him in early as he's a mature male before his wife's ready means that we've got some projects going forwards so how's she doing Jad? Yeah, she's alright yeah so there's the little girl how much does she weigh because she's she was about 300 grams last time we weighed her let's give her a little weigh so that will be his future wife but she's got a long way to go yet she's 300 grams 300 grams yeah Feeding day is going to be in the next couple of days, so hopefully she'll be back on food. And uh, we'll see how she goes and start building. And this is the thing about your projects, you know, you buy these projects, the Dreams of Cools ate for us really well, the boy on the VPI went really well, but the girl just didn't want to know. And I think it's because she was eating live mice and she didn't yeah. transfer across very easily. So I think when you commit money to projects and you've got all your future plans and your ideas, thinking if everything goes to plan, this is what we can achieve. The reality is that it isn't always the case. Right, so what other projects have we got, Jared? We can skim through, there's only 10 minutes left, so we'll skim okay. through. We've yep. got uh, Albino Het Clown. Yep. So we want to produce some Albino Clowns. We've paired him to things that have Het Clown or Het Albino. Yeah. Um, we've got a Super Pastel Banana G Stripe. And our plan with that one is to make some um, G Stripe Clowns. Yeah. Because they look absolutely wicked. Yeah. Um, so we've got a couple girls going to him. A zoom on that, yeah, okay. And it's going a bit closer so we can see a bit more what's going on. What's the next project, Jack? Uh, Firefly double head orange ghost pied, and we've got a male and a female that both double head, so we're just going to put them together and see if we can hit the double visuals. Odds are going to be quite low, but that's we'd like to get some orange ghost pied, so we're trying it. Yeah, the next one's my personal favorite, which is the pastel gravel head clown. So we're putting him to the past, the super gravel, so we can produce potentially some super gravels that are 50% hit clown, because um, that will really increase the odds of hitting that uh, so past the highway to, yeah, clown. We're trying to get the yeah increase the odds of the future projects. So it's a building block, but gravel um, clowns are very very nice, Jared, and they're very hard to get, and they're sought after. Um, on North Market, there's not a lot out there, is there? And they're quite expensive too. So to produce your own is a good move. There's some um, uh, pastel lesser clown is the other one we're going to put to him because we want to produce super pastel lesser gravels that are visual clowns because that will make the project a lot easier as well. Because yeah. then if we can make that, then pair it to this girl, which is a pastel leopard orange dream yellow belly head clown. Yeah. So the, I mean, it just makes the odds a lot more 
bearable rather than one out of 324, whatever it is. Yeah, yeah. I mean, some of these projects have got really long odds. But long odds, but worth it for the snakes. Yeah, but by Beautiful. actually taking that step of getting a visual clown, the odds will improve each time. So even if you don't hit your projects on long odds, you keep going until the odds come in your favour. Exactly. Okay. And then we've got the, uh, the Dream School, which is pretty straightforward. We're just going to produce lots of Dream Schools with him and also try and get some codoms in there. Um, but an exciting one with that one is we're going to try and put our pastel clown het pied to him so we can choose pieds that are double het for clown and lavender albino that sounds lovely and then also be pastel as well and that's so. Calypso your favourite girl number one yep so we could have made some beautiful visual clowns with her we could have yeah. put Hercules to her but we chose not to we need Which, to use that het pied and produce the triple hets or yeah. the double the visual double hets because she's carrying 100 percent het pied let's prove her out and let's get the pied out of that and, get, and that's our clown pride project with a uh, three-way opportunity there jared which is yeah. lovely yeah so then after that we've got a crystal 100 percent het pied yeah um and what's the plan is it to if you want to read out the plan i'll bring him over so you can have a look at him yeah, we've got the um, Tinker, 100% Het Pied, and we've got Athena. Now, I think Athena's down here, so that, that's the boy, is it? Yeah. Let's have a look at him. So that is a Mojave Special, 100% Het Pied. Now, because they're allelic, the Mojave and the Special are both in the same uh, bell complex, you won't be able to produce that into a Pied no. until you get let's say, say you produce a Mojave Pied and then you produce a Special Pied you'll have to put those two together to get your Crystal, crystal pied. Pieds and they're all white snake with red eyes yeah, and they are gorgeous so yeah, that's, that's, the plan there. that's what we're shooting for there so that's nice Chad, lovely male and we've got one Visual Pied that he's going to and one Het Pied to be able to increase the odds so that's lovely and then the next snake down from him is uh, the Mojave Bamboo 100% Het Ultra Male He's got massive. Yeah. And we're going to put him to the Phantom Pastel Yellow Belly. And we're going to try and produce some Purple Passions, which are then 50% Het for... There he is. 50, there'll be 50% Het for Ultraman as well. Which would be lovely. And he's doing really well. That's nice. He's getting nice and chunky. He was born grams. last year. Yeah. No, he's... Have we you, haven't power fed him or have anything. Have you checked him if he's producing sperm yet, Joe? Um, we haven't done that yet. Do you want to do that? Yeah, I can and make it. sure he's definitely a boy. <laughs> I know you, you've checked him several times, and he's definitely a boy, isn't he? So let's have a little look and see. So when you're sexing them, you want them to be nice and relaxed. Yeah, makes it a bit easier. Yeah, there's the sperm in the middle there, and a bit up there. Oh, he's full of sperm. And there's his hemipenes. Fantastic, Chad. <laughs> he's, he's good to go. So who's he going to? He's going to. He's going to the Phantom, Phantom Pastel Yellow Belly which is going to be a nice project. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. And then the last one we've got on here is the Simi Pied Elvis, and we're going to have another go for the Panda Pied project, subject to what she does this year. We'll see what happens there. So there are plans. And then the next stage was we had to try and work out, um, using probability theory, what the projected uh, value of the clutches are going to be. So if we go to the top, Jad, and just show them what we've done here. So we've got the projections going forward, so you've got your pairings, and then we've worked on the basis that we've got a top price and a bottom price for each egg. So the best snake, the top genes that we could get is the top price. The worst, well not the worst thing, but the least expensive gene is the bottom price. Yeah. We've averaged it out and times it by an average of five eggs, because that's our average clutch size that we have. Yeah. Um, and sensible. then we've got an yeah. estimated sales of what it's going to be. Yeah, so you can see the higher value projects are going to be, if we're working our way down these, which are the higher value projects, Chad, you can see. So we've got two grand here. Yeah. And which, which one's that one? Lightning Pines. The Lightning Pines. So by putting in a double recessive, you'll generate more income into the clutch. We've got five and a half, which will be the um, Pastel Gravel Clowns. Pastel Gravel Clowns. Because they sell for a lot of money, those do, but I think we'll hold back a lot of them. Yeah. Um, and we've got more gravel, so leopard, pastel, orange dream, yellow belly, gravel clowns. Yeah. Um, then dream schools, because we'll, every single one will be a dream school, and at the moment they're selling for about 1500, 1500 pounds. a yeah. piece. So. If 
we get five dream schools and they're worth 1500 each then that will give us seven and a half grand on the clutch which would be very nice mm -hmm. yeah we'll have one here so we've worked out this one looks about 4750 and which one's that and that's for pastel clown 100 percent head pied dream school yeah okay that's really good yeah and i mean they will vary but the thing is with snakes is you never know what you're going to get so you can never be too sure yeah but what we've done is we've worked it out by the, we'll do this one for instance yeah so this here is the pairing um is the pastel gravel clown so that's going to be the pastel gravel 100 percent head clown to the pastel leopard orange dream yellow belly head clown yeah and these are the odds so you take those odds off the um Morph market. market. I've gone on a morph calculator um, and worked out what the odds are of hitting these animals. So it gives you all the percentages here. I show you the percentages, and it gives you the traits and what you can achieve. And we've just put that copied and pasted onto a spreadsheet. Looked up what the price is at the moment that they're selling for. Yeah. If they're not there, then we've worked it out. We sort of p figured out how much the one most like it was, and then added a bit more for the genes. And we've multiplied the percentage of getting the egg times the value to give you what the estimated value of each potential outcome added that together and it gives you a very accurate probability calculation based on probabilities and five eggs if I zoom in you can see on this project there we go so what's each egg worth on average there so that one eight nine three so that would be worth nearly 900 pounds an egg if you've got five of them that's why it's yeah. worth four and a half grand and that's some eggs being worth couple grand per snake some snakes being worth 80 quid per snake so yeah. it just evens out to about that yeah that's really good Jad. so we've been spending a lot of time on this because we've been very accurate with our forecasting it and what i wanted to do Jad, is actually show the overall plan now before we wrap up so our plans in terms of the impact on cash flow and how it will work is when you take all these figures up we do an at sum on the total value of the projects so that tells us the number of eggs we're aiming for 140 next year do you want to move that while I talk it through, Jad? Sure. So we've got 140 eggs as our target. And our target, oh, this is our maximum potential, isn't it? So we're yeah. saying 55,000 pounds worth of value on the snakes. But the reality is 5% of our eggs go bad, 20% get absorbed, and 5% have defects. A born with defects, yeah. Born with defects. So we have to take off the value of 16,000 off that to give us a projected value of what 38 38 and these are all averages like yeah will change now we're probably going to hold back let's say 15 of those value so that leaves us with cash flow if we sell all the rest of the animals how much cash flow can we generate next year 23 and a half 23 24. which we need to because we've just looked at our costings so if you look at the costings food's going to be let's start at the top chair with the food so eight and a half. Do you want to go through the numbers while I kind of... Yeah, we've got eight, eight thousand four hundred pounds. These are all estimates again. Um, we've got paper towels and cleaning, about one thousand two hundred. Yeah. Light and heat, so running all the heat mats and heaters in the winter, one thousand two hundred. We've got vet bills here, just in case the snake gets sick, or in case we get a snake in and it's sick. We want to make sure it's taken care of, so we've always put that there. Uh, shirts and stickers, five hundred pounds. Miscellaneous things like whether we're buying tape or whatever it might be, 200 quid. Um, we're going to buy more racks because as you get more snakes, you need more racks. So £2,100 for that. Um, we're probably going to have to produce another one or two incubators. So we've put down £500 for that. Yeah. Freezers, we need another freezer for all the food that we've got. We get Wi-Fi in here, so £360. Uh, printage postage and stationery, 400 And then we've got a five grand budget for new snakes because we've got most of the stuff we need. So okay. total outgoings is twenty one thousand and sixty, which means if we have a profit, if we have an income of twenty three thousand five hundred eighty seven, less than twenty one, we should have two thousand five hundred twenty seven pounds increase in cash. Increase in cash plus, plus the stock. Plus the stock, so the profit's going to be about seventeen. Yeah, which I think is not bad for our second year in the facility is what we're aiming for. And, and we're not doing this to make money. Like no. a lot of people might see this and think, oh, they're only doing it for the money. Yeah, but um. We just need to make sure that we've got enough money to yeah. pay for the snakes and improve yeah. the hobby. And what it is, it's all about housekeeping because at the end of the day, if we can break even and actually further our projects, I'll be happy. Um, and to make sure that the hobby is paying for itself, isn't that right, Jared? Yeah. So I think, I hope you've enjoyed the 
mixture of some snake candy with the reality of building a business plan and the real costs as, as, you're, as you're collecting the spans, it's really important. So thank you so much for watching and we'll catch you next time. Bye bye for now.